I became extremely safety conscious as a result of being trapped in the MGM fire about 10 years ago. My husband and my son and I were trapped on the 21st floor and we almost died there. I remember laying on the floor in the hallway wanting just to go to sleep and never wake up and I, I seemed resigned to it. But I did survive. My family and I got out. Ever since then, I realized how fragile life is, how easy it is to lose. So I started putting fire extinguishers around my home and my car. When you hear the words fire and hotel, you may not get concerned, for hotels rarely catch fire. That may be true, but when a fire does occur, the results can be overwhelming. In the summer of 1997, a resort hotel caught fire, resulting in the deaths of 91 employees and guests. It is speculated that the high death toll was caused by insufficient extinguishing equipment and the violation of basic life, safety, and fire protection principles. The fire originated in the hotel kitchen, where a gas leak in an oven caused an explosion. Some reports indicate that even though smoke alarms and automatic sprinkler systems were installed, they failed to function or provide any warning. Guests found exit doors blocked and chained shut. The leading cause of death in fires is smoke inhalation, not contact with the fire. The importance of fire safety in a hotel environment can't be overstated. The lives of guests and employees are at stake, and the stakes are high. In this training program, we'll discuss basic fire prevention, emergency plans, early warning systems, smoke control, and hotel evacuation. Safety is everyone's responsibility. Fire prevention. Let's begin with the basics of fire prevention. It starts with good housekeeping. Mechanical and electrical rooms should not be used as storage areas. The storage of combustible materials, such as boxes, towels, and paper, and flammable liquids, such as paints, solvents, and fuels, should be avoided. A clear zone of 36 inches should be maintained around all electrical and mechanical equipment at all times. Storerooms, linen rooms, and janitor closets can get very messy if you don't clean them after each use. All trash, empty boxes, etc. should be removed daily. The storage of paper, boxes, and other materials can result in a potential fire hazard. Be sure to keep the storage at least 18 inches below sprinkler heads. Never store oily rags in anything but a metal can with a metal lid. The reason behind this is spontaneous combustion can occur. If soiled rags are just thrown in a corner or put in a non-metal container, these rags can catch on fire. All flammable liquids should be stored in their original or UL approved containers. The containers should then be placed in a flammable liquids storage cabinet. Be sure that all containers are closed and labeled with the contents and appropriate labels. Obey all smoking policies. Never smoke in unauthorized areas. There have been many deaths attributed to smoking materials catching other materials on fire. If you work in the laundry facility, it's important that lint traps are cleaned at least once per shift. They may need to be cleaned more often depending on the linen. A large number of hotel fires are caused by greasy kitchen rags. A few simple procedures will prevent this from happening at your hotel. First, kitchen rags should only be washed in the morning. The kitchen should deliver the rags prior to the laundry facility closing. The rags should be then placed in a bucket of degreaser and soaked overnight. In the morning, the rags should be washed on the appropriate cycle. When complete, inspect them to ensure there is not a large buildup of grease. Dry the linens. Be sure that the kitchen rags complete the cool-down cycle. Immediately remove and inspect the linens to be sure they have cooled. If not, lay them out on a table until all heat has dissipated. Kitchen hoods is another area where fire may occur. Grease-laden vapors rise from the cook line and are caught in the hood by filters or wash water. The residue left behind from these vapors is extremely flammable. The hood should be wiped out nightly to prevent the buildup of grease. Filters should be removed and washed at least weekly. 
This may need to be done as often as daily, depending on the type of kitchen equipment being used and how busy the kitchen is. The hood and ductwork must be professionally cleaned at least every three months. Be sure that deep fat fryers are separated from open flame equipment by either distance or a baffle. Following these simple procedures will greatly reduce the chances that a fire will occur in your kitchen. You can see in this photograph how grease and debris in this chimney flue caught fire and engulfed a large area of the hotel before being extinguished. Emergency planning. Have you ever witnessed someone who doesn't know what to do in an emergency? To avoid being unprepared, fire drills must be practiced. It requires time and effort, but it is a necessity. If you are not familiar with your responsibilities during a fire, please be sure to ask your supervisor. Emergency exits are identified throughout the hotel. Everyone sees them, but after a while you don't pay any attention to them. Don't let these areas become a convenient storage area. In case of an emergency, this may be your only way to safety. Never block or stack materials in front of exit doors. Be familiar with your emergency evacuation plan, how and when to sound the alarm, and know your evacuation routes and rally points. A rally point is designated outside the building, away from the building. The person in charge of this area will take a roll call, and if someone is missing, the person in charge can notify fire department officials that someone is missing and may still be in the building. These rallying points are very important, so make sure you know where they are and how to get there. Do you know how to use fire extinguishers? Everyone says yes, but do they really know how to use an extinguisher? Have you ever discharged an extinguisher? The point we want to make here is not everyone is trained to use a fire extinguisher, but they should be. There are certain procedures that should be followed because if you do it wrong, it could be worse than not doing it at all. Early warning. When we think of early warnings, we think alarms. Sometimes there are false alarms. Sometimes it's the real thing. Every alarm should be taken seriously and action taken as required in your hotel's policies and procedures. This is a manual pull station. This manual pull station is designed to be activated when fire or smoke is spotted. It will activate the hotel fire alarm system and initiate the fire emergency procedures. You should know that manual pull stations are located next to every exit door. Smoke and heat detectors are early warning devices. Smoke alarms will activate when a certain amount of smoke enters the device. Heat detectors work a bit differently. They are activated by heat. At predetermined temperatures, these detectors will sound an alarm. People hearing these alarms can't tell if they were activated by smoke or heat, but it makes no difference. It's an early warning of the potential of a fire. There may be bells, horns, voice activation messages. Again, all warning signs that something's wrong and action is required. Strobe lights are designed to warn hearing impaired people of possible fire or other emergency. Automatic sprinkler systems are a bit different. These are pipes full of water with a temperature activation head. This means that if a fire reaches a predetermined temperature near a sprinkler head, the sprinkler's fusible link will melt, allowing the water to flow and extinguish the fire. In computer rooms, you may have a carbon dioxide system that floods the room with carbon dioxide. Here, you are seeing a carbon dioxide system that has been activated in a newspaper press area. If this type of fire extinguishing system is activated, you should immediately leave the area. One of the ways a carbon dioxide system or fire extinguisher puts out a fire is to remove oxygen from the fire. It also reduces the amount of oxygen you have for breathing. One of the most important rules about life safety is to honor all alarms. Don't think they are all false alarms. Respond and take action. Know what to do and when to do it. Reporting fires is also an important responsibility. In the event that you discover a fire, be sure to follow these procedures. First, sound the alarm by activating the manual pull station or brake glass station. This will start the evacuation process. 
Second, call the hotel operator and report the exact location of the fire, such as third floor electrical room. Be specific. Third, if it's safe to do so, you can use a fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire. If you're in doubt, leave the firefighting to the professionals. The most important thing is life safety. So don't jeopardize your life or other people's lives by trying to extinguish a fire. Fourth, seal off the area and evacuate. Be sure to give proper directions. You should make it a habit every day to look for signs of damaged or non-functioning life safety or fire protection devices. Are fire extinguishers in their proper places? Have bells, horns, sprinkler valves, pull stations, fire hoses, or other items been damaged or tampered with? Are all of the fire doors closing and latching properly? It's your job to report damaged items so they can be repaired. It's an important job. It can be life or death in case of an emergency. As we said earlier, smoke inhalation is the leading cause of death in fires. When a fire occurs, smoke rises. That's why you always hear safety professionals tell you to drop to the floor to find your way out of a smoke-filled room. Don't be mistaken and believe that if you get down low, the smoke won't affect you. That's not the case. However, in the early stages of a fire, the smoke rises and you're able to see and breathe better near the floor. But eventually, smoke will fill the entire room. Another prevention technique is to make sure all vertical openings are closed and locked. This could be a laundry or trash chute. Fire and smoke rises, and if you have an open vent or opening, the fire is going to spread faster through that opening. Be sure all unprotected openings are closed, latched, and locked. Generally, chute doors are always kept closed. In some cases, these chute doors remain open, but they have a fusible link just like the sprinkler. If a fire melts the fusible link, the door is automatically closed. It's a good idea to check these periodically to make sure they're in working condition. The same thing applies to electrical and pipe chaseways. Electrical wiring and pipes often run from floor to floor in an area called a chaseway. The openings should be sealed with a fire-resistant insulation to prevent the transmission of smoke between floors. If you discover an unprotected opening, report it to engineering to be repaired. Atriums and open stairwells can be fire hazards for the same reason. A small fire can easily spread smoke throughout the stairwell or to multiple floors with an atrium. Many of these areas are equipped with smoke doors that will close and seal off the area only when the fire alarm is activated. To protect the integrity of the exit stairwell, make sure all enclosed stairwell doors are self-closing and self-latching. These doors should never be propped open. It's a fire hazard to keep them open. We've talked a bit about controlling smoke, but let's take it one step further. Fire doors must always remain closed and latched, not locked, but latched. This is of paramount importance. You don't want the doors to remain open and fill the stairway with smoke. Again, it's important to report any damage. This includes making sure fire doors operate as intended. Never allow storage or materials to be stacked near emergency exits or fire doors. In some corridors, additional doors which normally remain open have been installed. These doors are called smoke doors and are designed to close automatically when the alarm sounds. They will compartmentalize the floor, thereby helping to prevent the spread of smoke. These doors should be in good repair and should not be blocked open. Guest room doors are generally self-closing and self-latching. They're designed for that. It's everyone's job to report any door or other similar equipment that doesn't work properly. In case of fire, there may be smoke and fire dampers in specific parts of the building. You should be trained to identify these and to know how they operate. Again, make sure they are in serviceable condition. Another safety factor is stairwell pressurization. Your hotel may be equipped with fans that are designed to create a positive pressure in stairwells which will prevent smoke from entering the stairwell. The pressurization will only function when the fire alarm is activated. When we discuss proper egress, we are talking about the method you use to exit the building. 
There should never be any storage in hotel corridors. That impedes proper egress. There should never be any chairs or tables stored or placed in corridors. Exit doors must be maintained in a clear and unobstructed manner. No storage, no chairs, no tables. Never lock or chain any emergency exit. This is a felony in almost every state and in many countries around the world. If you're having a security problem, report it to security or your manager, but never lock or chain emergency exit doors. Of course, this applies to stairwells and other means of egress. Don't block emergency exits. Take a minute to think about an emergency. If you store materials in a stairwell or corridor, it may not be a problem for one or two people to exit. But what if 50 or 100 people are trying to get out? That storage of material can cause people to panic and not get out. How about draperies and other materials? Most of these materials are combustible and can burn easily or melt and produce toxic smoke. Never place combustible materials in stairwells. Think of what happens in an emergency and prepare for it. Certainly, all exits must be clearly marked, lighted, or illuminated. In case of an emergency, these will be your lifeline to safety. Report any damaged or non-functioning units so they can quickly be repaired or replaced. Check your signs. Are they in their proper place? Do arrows point the proper direction? In an emergency situation, an arrow which directs someone away from an exit could mean much more than an inconvenience. Are emergency lights provided? In case of an emergency and the hotel loses power, will emergency lights come on and illuminate emergency exits and corridors? Emergency lights and exits should be inspected at least monthly. Emergency generators should also be checked and tested frequently. We've covered a lot, but we've also left out many things. Fire safety and prevention is your responsibility. Make sure everyone is trained in emergency equipment, emergency procedures, and that your hotel's fire plan includes everyone. Guests may not take the time to think about fire safety, so your hotel must have procedures and a plan in effect to protect them. You are the eyes and ears throughout the hotel, in guest rooms and other work areas. Be aware of fire safety, emergency exits and equipment, and report any damaged or missing equipment. Fire protection is everyone's responsibility. Thank you.